In this video, we'll take a look at two alternative building technologies, the Koto panel and the EPS wall panel. If you're looking to build your property, watch this video to discover two similarities and three differences between these two technologies. Also, if you want to learn more, I've created specific videos talking about each technology in detail. The links are found in the description section below this video. With that, I'm Nick Mwema from Property Noma. So let's start with two similarities that both an EPS and a cotton panel share. Similarity number one is that both panels use EPS material. EPS stands for expanded polystyrene sheets. This is the white stuff you see surrounding an EPS wall panel and at the top of a cotton panel. Expanded polystyrene is a light material and in fact is made up of about 98% air. Because of that, it makes both EPS and cotton panels light in nature, which in turn makes them easier to carry and install during construction. Because both these panels are light, they significantly reduce the weight of your structure. This is a huge benefit for you as it means you can reduce the cost of construction, especially with foundations, beams, columns, and so on. Since expanded polystyrene is an inert material, it offers excellent thermal and soundproofing insulation. Similarity number two is that both panels have a steel mesh surrounding them. With EPS panels, the steel mesh is exposed to the environment. With cotton panels, however, the steel mesh is embedded inside and is not exposed unlike EPS wall panels. The work of the steel mesh is to add extra reinforcement to the panels and to also minimize cracks that could appear on your wall. Now that we've looked at the two similarities, let's shift our focus to the three differences between these two panels. The first difference is the design approach. When you buy an EPS wall panel, this is how it looks like. EPS is sandwiched in between the steel mesh and extends the entire length of the panel. The expanded polystyrene is uniform with no hollow sections on it. But with a cotton panel, the design approach is different. When you buy one, you'll see that there are hollow cores at different sections of the panel. Separating the hollow cores is expanded polystyrene. In short, this means that a typical cotton panel has hollow cores while an EPS panel doesn't have any. We'll talk about the function of these hollow cores in the next difference. Another design approach difference is with dimensions. There are various dimensions to choose from, but for this video, we look at the biggest sizes of each panel. With an EPS panel, the biggest size is one that is 3 meters high and 1.2 meters wide. The recommended thickness is 80 millimeters. What varies with an EPS wall panel is its height and thickness. The width remains the same. With a cotton panel, however, the biggest size is one that is 1.2 meters high, 1.8 meters wide, and 200 millimeters thick. All the dimensions vary with a cotton panel. What about plumbing and electrical pipe work? With EPS panels, the expanded polystyrene can be easily chased for pipework to pass through. As for cotton panels, pipework can pass through the hollow cores. Both these features are huge time savers when it comes to plumbing and electrical work. The second difference comes with the application of concrete. With an EPS wall panel, fresh concrete is applied externally. It can be applied using a short crit machine or manually depending on your budget. The concrete has to cover every surface area of an EPS panel. However, with a quarter panel, fresh concrete is poured 
inside the hollow cores. The cores are filled with concrete to the brim. It also means you don't apply fresh concrete externally on cotter panels. We'll explore this point in the next difference. It's important to use the specified strength of concrete because it's the concrete that gives both of these panels the structural strength. The third difference is plaster. Cotter panels have an external plaster already applied, meaning you don't incur additional costs of plastering. However, that's not the case with EPS wall panels. After applying concrete to them, a fine layer of plaster is added to achieve a smooth finish for your EPS wall. This extra step of plastering isn't necessary with cotter panels. In this regard, this is a big difference between the two technologies. And if saving time is super important to you, cotter panels offer a slight advantage and can help you reach your deadlines on time. Of course, it all boils down to price, right? For the sake of simplicity, we'll focus on the price ranges of each panel. Something worth noting, the price is determined by the size of the panel you want. The bigger the size, the more the cost. That's the basic principle. Also, these prices can vary depending on your country. And since I'm based in Kenya, I'll use the prices that are found here. So, with an EPS wall panel, the price range is from 4,000 shillings to 6,000 shillings. With cotter panels, the price range is from 1,000 shillings to 5,400 shillings. But you should consult your nearest EPS or cotter company to get accurate quotations. So those are the two similarities and three differences that I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope the video answered some of the questions you had about these two alternative building technologies. But if you have any burning question, kindly leave one in the comments below. Before you go, leave a like to help the video reach more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.